Okay, here we look at the limiting factors in photosynthesis. We've looked at biological systems, and there's always some sort of limiting factor that's involved. We're going to look at that as more of a micro scale here. Specifically, we're going to look at light intensity, carbon dioxide concentration, and also temperature, and how this inf impacts the rate of photosynthesis. Starting with limiting factor in, in the general sense, a limiting f factor. These can be resources and environmental conditions that restrict growth, abundance, or distribution of an organism or a population of organisms in an ecosystem. We've talked about predators before, physical barriers, particular biomes, speed limits. All of these impact uh, are limiting factors to an individual. We're now going to take this and look at more of a micro scale here. So light intensity. So light energy is necessary for photosynthesis, and as it applies in the name, photo meaning light, but the intensity of light can vary due to weather, for example. Is it a cloudy day? Is it a sunny day? Is it a foggy morning? How is that impact, impacting the light intensity? The location of the plant. Is it in a large open field? Is it near some rocks? Is it under large trees? Um, different areas. Is it on the north side of a building, the south side? This can impact the intensity that that of light that that plant may receive. Also the season, spring, summer, winter, or fall. It can impact the light intensity based on the angle of the sun. Relative season of nearby plants. What this means is if you're a plant living under a deciduous tree, they drop their leaves in the fall, meaning in the winter and early spring, that plant will receive a greater intensity. Looking at our light intensity to a photosynthetic rate graph, you'll notice as light intensity increases from A to B, the rate of photosynthesis will also increase. However, this is not continuous and forever. When we reach here our maximum rate, even if the light becomes brighter, from B to C the light is brighter, the rate of photosynthesis will remain the same. We reach that plateau or that maximum rate. Now light intensity follows this particular inverse square law. And what this is, the inverse square law is a specified intensity is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source. Well, what does this mean? Kind of in a little easier terms here, energy twice as far from the source is spread out over four times the area. So we'll notice here with our light, and as we get further away, it's like an exponential decrease in the intensity of the light. You can see that here with our candle and our book and our clock, and getting as we get further away, the intensity of that light drops off significantly. And we see that here, the little mathematical here, the inverse square of the sphere. So we've got our area, and it's being spread out over that four times the area as the distance becomes twice as far. So this is part of the reason why light decreases so quickly, because it's an inverse square law. Now light's measured in something called PAR, P-A-R, um, photosynthetically active radiation. And it's designated for the spectral range or wave band of solar radiation from 400 to 700 nanometers that photosynthetic organisms are able to use in process of photosynthesis. Now this 400 to, na to 700 nanometers is referring to specific wavelengths. The 400 we can see here versus the 7 and 800. And we notice on our graph over here that we're, the wavelengths are not all used by the same pigments in plants. So here chlorophyll B, chlorophyll A, carotenoids are all using different wavelengths. This is helping the plant be able to use a greater portion of this spectrum. What this image shows here is we have our light intensity at the center point, and as we get further away from that light intensity, we notice how quick the power may drop off. So we can see it being very limited or very low intensity to the perimeters, and very high intensity in the center point here. It's so important if we're considering lighting a plant, we want to have that plant directly under that light, because the further we keep that light away, the less intensity of light that it will receive. Carbon dioxide concentration is another consideration. It can help limit or potentially limit plant growth. So carbon dioxide is a common limiting factor, assuming all other factors, example, water and lighting, are not limiting. So all these limiting factors assume that they're the most limiting amongst all of the other factors. Keep in mind that the atmospheric percentage of carbon dioxide is only about 0.04%. The more carbon dioxide a plant is given, the faster it can photosynthesize. 
but this only occurs up to a certain rate, as we see here again. Increasing the carbon dioxide concentration, these brackets mean concentration, will not increase the rate of photosynthesis beyond that point. So here's our normal atmospheric air. It's a mixture. We've got some water vapor. Here's our carbon dioxide. Here's our oxygen. Lots of nitrogen. We're increasing our carbon dioxide concentration from A to B. Photosynthetic rate is also increasing. However, when we get to C, we're in that plateau phase. Increasing carbon dioxide here at this point is not yielding any greater photosynthesis. How this may look, elevating carbon dioxide concentrations can increase plant growth, assuming sunlight and nutrients are not limiting factors. Keep in mind the average atmospheric carbon dioxide expressed in parts per million is approximately 410. So here's our ambient here. And these images show growth with additional carbon dioxide expressed in parts per million. So ambient this would be about 410. For increasing it by additional 150, so this would be about 560 parts per million. Notice the plant's growing a little bit better. We're increasing 300 parts per million from ambient, better growth, and 450 parts. We're almost doubling uh, the amount of carbon dioxide present in the natural atmosphere. And we notice the growth difference that does occur. Same thing here is 196. This is about half of the normal carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And here's 752, a study done. On average, growth response to 300 parts per million of additional carbon dioxide. You can look at all the, um, some of the data provided here, and pretty much it all comes through in an increase in some average of anywhere from an average of 32.8% to as high as 70% for trees, increasing the ambient um, carbon dioxide levels. So this is one way, assuming again water, nutrients, and lights are all not limiting factors, to help increase yields of plants. Temperature is the last one. Chemical reactions of photosynthesis are impacted by temperature. The rate and temperature are directly proportional, meaning as temperature increases, so does the photosynthetic rate. However, since this is a biological system, there's an optimum temperature. Pretty much for most plants, any rate above or any temperature above 86 degrees Fahrenheit is going to be the maximum rate of photosynthesis. Anything above or below that is going to be below maximum. Now, if we get too high, we notice that our rate does drop off significantly. Proteins are starting to denature, and there's other issues. Below 86, there's just not enough energy to move those molecules fast enough. 86 is considered the optimum temperature. Anything above that, again, we see a dramatic decrease. And below that, we're noticing an increase up to that point. So the general summary here, just to put it in graphical form, how does light, carbon dioxide, and temperature impact the rate of photosynthesis? We can see how light impacts it, and carbon dioxide have very similar graphs. And temperature has that optimum, again, around 86 degrees Fahrenheit, and photosynthetic rate will be lower at temperatures greater than 86, or less than 86 degrees Fahrenheit.